From changing trends to bankruptcies to global pandemics, a variety of forces have conspired against these ice cream and froyo chains. John Jan opened the first Jans in the Bronx way back in 1897. Once upon a time, you could find about 30 Jans locations throughout New York, New Jersey, and Southern Florida. But now, there's only one holding out in Queens, New York. Jans is famous for its kitchen sink sundae, which is large enough for an entire table of friends to share. Nick Mukas, co-owner of the last remaining Jans, revealed to the New York Business Journal that his father acquired the restaurant as a franchise in 1970. Many locations then started faltering later that decade. As Mukas put it, when Jans started, ice cream was a treat. Now there's more competition — frozen yogurt, Carvel, Baskin-Robbins, and ice cream sold in grocery stores. The last Jans has survived because Mukas' father converted it into a diner that serves breakfast, lunch, and supper and offers everything from seafood and burgers and other sandwiches to Greek and Italian specialties. And you can definitely still order its incredible ice cream. <laughs> everything that was the same suddenly isn't anymore. Steve Harrell opened the first Steve's Ice Cream in Somerville, Massachusetts back in 1973. The store's claim to fame was its creamy and rich homemade ice cream. Harrell was the first to introduce smush-ins with gourmet ingredients like Reese's peanut butter cups and Oreo cookies folded into his ice cream. Going to the original Steve's used to be a major event, with people sometimes lining up for half an hour just to get their favorite treat. Harrell sold the business in 1977 and returned to selling ice cream in 1980 with the opening of Harrell's in Northampton, Massachusetts. Meanwhile, in 1988, the new owners of Steve's purchased 100 Heidi's Frogen Yozert shops to add to the company's more than 400 stores. Alas, Steve's ice cream stores now no longer exist. The original Harrell's shop does, though. It continues to sell gourmet ice cream along with frozen yogurt and dairy-free ice cream. I introduced the ice cream mix into the world, uh, and that's quite a story to that. TCBY, which stands for the country's best yogurt, first opened in Little Rock, Arkansas in 1981. By 2000, it was the world's largest frozen yogurt chain, with about 3,000 shops across 70 countries. But after the Pinkberry franchise opened in 2005, new and trendy yogurt shops started popping up everywhere. With so much competition, TCBY found itself filing for bankruptcy protection in 2008, and its store numbers began to dwindle into the hundreds. As of 2022, TCBY has about 250 locations open. The company has tried to remain relevant by catering to a variety of dietary needs and having options that look more like an ice cream parlor. If you went to a TCBY in the 80s, you would just get a cup of frozen yogurt with your toppings of choice. But now, in the 2020s, the menu also includes non-dairy, no-sugar added, and gluten-free options. You can buy soft-serve frozen yogurt, hand-scooped frozen yogurt, banana splits, coffee chillers, milkshakes, parfaits, shivers, sorbet fizzes, and sundaes, as well as cakes and pies. In a landscape full of ice cream and froyo, Cup's frozen yogurt stood out by being the hooters of frozen yogurt when it first opened in 2010. As Cup's co-founder Rick Barbrick has described it, it's more of a club-like experience with an edgy vibe. We have loud dance music with lighting and murals that give us a look and feel that is very different from the normal yogurt bar or ice cream shop. The concept sounds like it would sell itself, but the chain has had to close several locations. Currently, only one New York spot and four New Jersey cups remain. All cup stores offer self-serve yogurt with a variety of toppings and sauces. To remain competitive, the company is trying out a few new concepts. The Fairlawn New Jersey and Yonkers New York locations now offer 18 flavors of homemade ice cream and fresh-baked cookies for ice cream sandwiches and milkshakes. The company also plans to expand the ice cream and ice cream sandwiches into more of its locations in the future. In 2005, Shelly Huang and Young Lee were inspired by the success of Red Mango in South Korea and decided to open Pinkberry in California. It wasn't long before it started expanding throughout the country. But then in 2007, a class-action lawsuit accused the chain's product of not really being as all-natural as it had claimed, and the company later had to show that its frozen treats had enough probiotics to be certified as yogurt. In 2013, Pinkberry started offering Greek yogurt smoothies, and then in 2021, they added two cold brew fruit teas to their menu. But the bulk of the menu remains pretty much the same as it was when it first opened. Froyo chains have continued to close down, with multiple Pinkberry locations among the casualties. Without enough changes to make the business profitable, some Pinkberry franchisees simply decided not to renew their franchise agreements when they expired. The chain seems to be doing at least a little bit better than some of the other entries on the list. As of 2022, Pinkberry still has more than 100 shops across the United States.
Friendly's has always had a menu that included lunch and dinner food alongside ice cream since brothers Curtis and Presley Blake opened the diner-style restaurant in 1935. The company has racked up a lot of debt over the years and had to close 63 of its 487 stores when it filed for bankruptcy in 2011. It was also among many businesses that struggled during the COVID-19 pandemic, and the company filed for bankruptcy again in November 2020. The owners then sold the business to the parent company of Red Mango and Smoothie Factory for less than $2 million. After the 2020 bankruptcy declaration, Friendly's did everything it could to become profitable again, including changing the menu and stressing its takeout and delivery options. Unfortunately, the company also had to close a large number of restaurants to stay afloat. By 2022, Friendly's had about 100 restaurants, with a few still in a temporarily closed state of limbo. In an attempt to improve its outlook for the future, the company announced in 2022 that it would be trying out a fast casual version called Friendly's Cafe in Westfield, Massachusetts. It would continue to serve customer favorites like ice cream and hamburgers, alongside new items like a tater kegs appetizer and bang and beef stroganoff. Friendlies is reinventing the way they serve their meals in Westfield and hope to bring the fresh look to other locations here in Western Mass. 16 Handles claims to have been the first self-serve frozen yogurt shop in New York City when it opened in 2008. It's since had to evolve over the years to stay relevant with so many Froyo chains vying for prominence. Since 2011, 16 Handles has added cakes, frozen treats, artisan flavors and toppings, gluten-free options, vegan options, smoothies, milkshakes, and fraps to its menu. To appeal to those who may not like frozen yogurt, it's also added gelato and non-dairy soft serve. In 2019, 16 Handles had 35 stores, but with competition coming on strong, not all of them managed to survive. By late 2022, the chain was down to 29 locations in New York, Connecticut, New Jersey, and Florida. In August 2022, QSR reported that Neil Hirschman, 16 Handle's largest franchise owner, and YouTube celebrity Danny Duncan bought the company, in the hopes that Froyo would be making a comeback. Original owner Solomon Choi said in a statement, I want to see 16 Handle's grow and evolve, and Neil has the right mindset to set lofty goals and put the right plan together, which is exactly the type of leadership the brand needs. Yogurtland emerged in California in 2006, just as yogurt chains were starting to sprout up everywhere. CEO Philip Chang told Mashed in 2022 that he was flattered by all the copycats as his business grew. The company had more than 160 locations in 2011, with plans to expand to over 550 by 2015. But as of 2022, it only has around 250. While frozen yogurt shops seemed to be everywhere for a while, some of Yogurtland's temporary pandemic closings became permanent, with fewer people wanting to go out for a self-serve Froyo splurge. Yogurtland has tried several new ideas in the changing business landscape of the 2020s. As Chang explained to Mashed, it's not just short-term profit-making. What we're aiming for is, maybe for decades, to stay alive and then support the community. As a result, Yogurtland changed its menu and even its business type. In 2021, the chain tried out limited-time fruit bowl fusions, and as a follow-up to its 2020 experiment with a coconut milk-based yogurt, it also launched a limited-time non-dairy oat milk option in 2021 that tasted like cinnamon oatmeal cookies. Other innovations included opening a fast casual eatery called Wholesome in 2020 and four chicken sandwich restaurants called Egg and Bird in 2021. Then in November 2022, the brand announced plans to add even more new menu items, including acai bowls, smoothies, and shakes. When customers say, I love Yogurtland, we, we really uh, want to share our love. In 1920, Harry Burt became the first person to create a chocolate-covered ice cream treat on a stick. Once he realized he really had something worthwhile, he began sending white-clad good humor men out to deliver the frozen bars around neighborhoods via 12 refrigerated ice cream trucks with bells. Interestingly enough, the first bells for the trucks came from his son's bobsled. In 1950, 90% of good humor's ice cream sales were from its fleet of 2,000 trucks. By the early 70s, the company was down to 1,200 trucks and was losing profits from rising fuel costs, insurance, union contracts, and competition. Then, in 1976, they realized that selling ice cream through grocery stores was more profitable. You can still find good humor ice cream treats at local grocery stores, and some independent ice cream truck drivers may purchase them to resell. But the sight of an actual good humor ice cream truck is a rare occurrence these days. A few privately owned trucks appear at special events like antique car shows, but while they may be selling good humor ice cream, the trucks don't actually belong to good humor. Tasty Freeze began in Illinois in 1950 and eventually became immortalized in the lyrics of the 1982 John Mellencamp song, Jack and Diane. 
At the height of the chain's success, it had nearly 2,000 roadside stands across the U.S. But it was actually all the way back in 1963 when Tasty Freeze first started to falter, as the company tried its hand at mobile ice cream vehicles and ended up having to file for bankruptcy. Despite its early hiccups, Tasty Freeze persevered until 2003, when the original hamburger stand and the Wiener Schnitzel hot dog chain acquired the chain's soft serve ice cream. The two restaurants had already been selling Tasty Freeze ice cream in their restaurants, so the match made perfect sense. When you go to the Tasty Freeze website, you can find out whether your nearest location is part of an original hamburger stand or a wiener schnitzel. As of 2022, Tasty Freeze ice cream is available at 250 locations in six states, with the majority of them in California. However, only four original Tasty Freeze stands remain – in Anchorage, Alaska, Milton, Florida, Harvey, North Dakota, and Spring Valley, Illinois. A good old-fashioned Tasty Freeze dessert. It's more than a meal, it's a treat. According to the International Frozen Yogurt Association, Everything Yogurt was the first chain to start selling Froyo before it became trendy. The first location opened in New York in 1976. By the 90s, it was the second largest frozen yogurt chain with nearly 300 stores. The company that owned Everything Yogurt eventually evolved into bananas, smoothies, and frozen yogurt franchises. But as of 2022, there's only one remaining Everything Yogurt store in Brooklyn and one remaining bananas, smoothies, and frozen yogurt location on Staten Island. At the very very last Everything Yogurt, you can purchase frozen yogurt in a cone, as a smoothie, in a cup with fruit, or in a milkshake. The store also sells lemonade, fountain sodas, and Frosties, which are a blend of fruit and ice. For some broader appeal, the shop has also added pastries and soft pretzels to its offerings.